back to square one. Yeah, the I think some of those um, incentives that you put in, they're, none of them are like unattainable. You know, none of them you look at and you say it's impossible. There's no way he's making that. Like because the Chiefs are the Chiefs, <clears throat> even winning the Super Bowl is almost like a 50-50 proposition for them. Making it back to the Super Bowl is almost expected at this point. So they're very attainable. The all-pro thing, he is the best interior lineman in the NFL pending what happens with Aaron Donald. It's a return. You know, last season he was. But that was also the first year that Aaron Donald wasn't really Aaron Donald. So that's definitely possible. Defensive player of the year, I would say, is reasonably unlikely simply because there's so many good candidates that it's reasonably unlikely that any one of them makes it. Um, but they're all possible. Like, the, the biggest problem to me with this contract is he didn't even get a no tag clause out of it. Like, he didn't even sort of guarantee that he's about to hit the payday at the end of this year because the Chiefs could just tag him. Now, they'd have to tag him at a pretty large number because of the contract, but they can. Like, this is, he can't even guarantee that he's going to escape their clutches and, and get the giant contract this time next year. Exactly. That, that is the biggest failure here. And look, Kansas City drew a hard line and clearly was not going to give in. And actually, the funny thing here is it's a massive number regardless, but his franchise tag number under the original contract for next year would have been about $34 million if they tagged him. He doesn't use the league-wide number. His cap hit already is larger than the interior defender or you know defensive tackle franchise tag. So we're not looking at that here. It's a different number. Now it would be $32 million. So look, still a huge number, but it's actually a lower franchise tag as a result of his holdout and, and the reworking of this contract than it would have been. Yes, these incentives would carry forward if he gets tagged. You keep those incentives in the deal and, and they apply again. But as we just talked about, they're not very easy to attain. So, yeah, th th there's no way to look at this besides, you know, him and his representation took a gamble, tried to strong arm the Kansas City Chiefs, and, and it completely flopped. Are we in a world now where if an NFL team wants to play hardball with a negotiation, they win? Like every every step in the road now, Chris Jones, um, the, the the running back, Saquon Barkley, like got nothing effectively. He got like a 900,000 raise and he had to show up to training camp. Josh Jacobs at least got out of training camp, but basically had to show up for no more money. Um, as you say, Zach Martin's the only one that's worked, but Dallas is kind of the team that would – be like, oh, we want to take care of Zach. Like, we're, you know, he's one of our guys. We want to pay him. And it was just a case of getting around to that. But if Dallas had just drawn a line in the sand and said, no, not going to happen. You're under contract. You made the deal. <clears throat> Show up to work. I mean, eventually the numbers would have gotten so high that Zach Martin had to come back, right? Or retired. Like, those would have been his options. Yes. Yeah, no, they could have gotten to that point. You know, he didn't get an extension or anything. I'm sure he would have liked, you know, future years and, and more assurances and security, not just in this year. He did do pretty well, but but it obviously could have gone better. So, yeah, I mean, to a degree, the team always can win that battle. I think you need to be a pivotal player in a locker room and a guy that other players are genuinely going to be frustrated with, uh, you know, about you not being there and not getting rewarded. Right. But, I mean, Saquon Barkley is that guy. He, he's the face of the franchise in New York. The team wasn't going to protest and not play their games if he didn't show up. Uh, the Giants found a way to do it. So, look, players have to use all the leverage they have at their disposal. They have to try to accomplish what they can. In particular, I think guys trying to get a second contract, not a third deal like a Chris Jones, like a Zach Martin. But the last piece here is... You see these shorter, shorter deals coming across the NFL, and you're saying, you know, well, maybe a player should want five years. No. Why is Mike Evans entering a contract year and, you know, for all we know, doesn't get a big payday because he signed a five-year extension? Zach Martin signed a six-year extension. Like, that is why you're seeing players now sign three- and four-year deals because teams are going to draw, you know, draw a hard line when you're 29, 30 years old trying to get another contract. Um, you said that, you know, the new CBA, the new language made it easier for this to happen, the sort of toughening of fines, all that kind of thing. Uh, what did, so, you know, I've made this point before that I think the NFLPA is just in a tough spot when it comes to negotiating CBAs because they have a much broader range of interests that they have to try and look out for, right? Generally speaking, the owners are more or less on the same page and there's fewer of them. So it's easier to like hear the things we're negotiating for. Whereas over here, you've got like a million different interests, all oftentimes conflicting. So you're just behind the eight ball. You're going to lose because you can't get everything you want. And some guys are going to get screwed and you end up looking terrible. So with that said, 
this kind of been surprising to the NFLPA. Like they knew they were giving this up. What did they get in exchange in that negotiation? Uh, you tell me. Uh, they got <laughs> marijuana is less of a punishment. So whoop, whoopie, that, that's fantastic. Only one testing date now for Mar- like seriously. Like I, they got nothing. They they got completely taken to the woodshed in, in that negotiation. I mean, no, look, minimum cap spending is now 90% instead of 89%, and that 1% does matter. Like, there are little wins here and there, sure. But, um, no, they, they did not do a good job. And, it, and it, like you said, it is impossible. I'm not saying, you know, Demory Smith, and, and, you know, could not have done better. Or somebody else could have done better. It, it's a hard job and a hard thing to do because, as you mentioned, so the number one thing we always talk about, they should abolish the franchise tag. Look, you know, I agree. I get it. I understand the argument. Sixty percent of the NFL what players, why would they care about a right. franchise tag when they are making six hundred thousand dollars? You know, it's just not a priority for them. So it's very tough to get the bargaining unit to all care about certain things. Yeah, I, I do feel like they're just going to get hosed every time the negotiation comes up because there's no way. They're just in a harder bargaining position. They're trying to represent too many different interests. Um, That is pretty rough.